friends, welcome to another video where we're going to run through paper 2 revision questions and this video is based solely on your trig questions. Okay, so I've taken all the past papers that I've set up in the in the previous years and I've put together all the questions on trigonometry. So if you are looking for a video where you just want to revise through your trig questions for grade 10, this is a very good video to watch. All right. So let's start. So you'll see that the numbering doesn't make sense because I've just taken it and copied and pasted it from previous years. All right, so question three. Solve for theta, where theta is an element of 0 to 90. So all they are telling you is that your answer that you're going to get should lie between 0 and 90. And they say correct to the nearest whole number. So when they say to you to round off otherwise, please adhere to that. Make sure that you do round off then to the nearest whole number. Okay, so 2 tan theta is equal to 2,38. So they are asking you to calculate theta. So when you are asked to calculate an angle size, remember we are asked, we have to press shift tan. But first we need to get rid of whatever is in front. And if there were additions or subtractions here at the back, we would also have to get rid of them first. So with your algebra, you should know that we're going to divide by 2 on each side to get tan theta is equal to 1,19. And now you're going to say shift tan, and it's going to open up 1.19, sorry. So if you press shift tan, it opens up a bracket, and you put 1.19, close bracket, and then you get theta's value, which will be rounded off to the nearest decimal 50 degrees. Okay, so algebra, a bit of algebra needed there. So here we've got half sine 2 theta plus 40. So do you see that goes all together? So here we have to press shift sign to sort of get rid of or release that sign. And then we're going to um, do the operation of the 2 um, theta plus 40. Okay, 0, 0,433. Um, Okay, what you can do is, yeah, you can divide with a half. Another way, you, what you could have done is you could have times by 2. So if you've got 0 0.433 divided by 0 0.5 gives you um, sine 2 theta plus 40 is equal to 0 0.866. And now we're going to press shift sine 0 0.866 which gives you 2 theta plus 40 is equal to, and I'm somewhere going to round off there yeah, already because when I add 40 and divide by 2, or let me rather might just keep it, 59,997. I'm going to keep this in my calculator. Then I'm going to subtract 40, and then I'm going to divide by 2, which gives you, rounded off to the nearest whole number, 10 degrees. Okay, please don't forget your degree sign over there. Okay, because we are working out a size of an angle. Then they say to you, if A is 153.8 and B is 88.4, determine sine A plus B divided by 3, correct to two decimal places. Okay, so we're just going to replace at the top 153,8 plus 88,4 all divided by 3 and that you just put into your calculator exactly like that then you should get 0 0.9869 carry on but rounded off to the nearest two decimal gives you 0 0.99 right here's another question that they had I saw I did it already to make the video a little bit faster given that a is 15 and b is 79 calculate the following 2 plus sine b minus a so b minus a will give you that 64 and if you pop that into your calculator you get 2.9 rounded off to nearest one decimal so with the ib we round off to nearest one decimal unless stated otherwise over here so tan i replaced the um, b with 79 so remember your calculator you can't go and squish that two in there like this but the way you would write it up in your calculator is 
exactly the same as that. Okay, and then you're going to times it with sine 15 square. Again, you can't push the 2 in there in your calculator. You'll see it has to go at the back. And then you get 1.8. Then it says solve for theta, given that theta is an acute angle. So again, they just told me um, that an, it's going to be between 0 and 90 degrees. And so you don't have to stress about that. And this one, I remember throw, uh, throwing off some of the kids in my class, tan theta is equal to cos 60. So remember, cos 60 is just a value. And if you put it into your calculator, you get a half. And then you shift tan a half, which gives you 26.6. Okay, over here, two, uh, sorry, sorry, sine 2 theta minus 1. So first of all, we're going to throw the 1 over, and you get is equal to a positive 1. And then you say shift sign um, 1, which gives you 90 degrees. And then you divide by 2 to give you 45 degrees. All right, then with these easier type questions, also your introduction um, would be definitely in section A. They say to you in triangle PQR, R is 90, PR is 3.2, and Q is 33.45. So luckily everything is shown up into your, um, onto your picture. Then, I, then they say to you, calculate PQ. So over here, we've got PQ. So remember, you're always working from the angle that has been given, not the 90 degrees. Okay, so we've got from here, we know we've got the opposite. And the one that we are looking for is PQ, which is directly opposite to the uh, 90 degree, which we call the hypotenuse. Okay, so a good thing to do is always to write up your sine theta, cos theta, and tangent theta, oh, just an angle size there. Um, your sin, it's a sin to say, oh, cos to go and see, aha, and tan is a maniki tanning. Okay, or you can remember it's so katoa, any way you were taught. All right, so now we can see we've got the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is sine. So sine 33,45 degrees is equal to the opposite, which was 3.2, over the hypotenuse, which is PQ. Let me just keep it the way they wrote it, PQ. Now, lots of you look at the algebra here and you think, what should I do? What is happening? What should I times? And there's a long way of doing it by timesing with PQ on each side, then dividing with sine 33.45 on each side. But a quicker way is just to write up the top of your fraction in your mind's eye. You can do this in your mind's eye as well. As 3.2, your sine 33.45 goes in there and your PQ goes in there. And then you treat it as if the way you would do the calculation for the si uh, sorry distance time and speed so pq is equal to 3.2 divided by 33.45 so i'm just going to write it down pq is equal to 3.2 divided by sine 33.45 so pq is equal to 3.2 divided by sine 33.45 which gives you 5.8, and we can round off to the nearest one decimal centimeters. Okay, for the next question, they ask you to calculate angle P. Angle P, ugh, this one's easy. If you remember, interior angles of a triangle always add up to 180. So what plus 90 plus 33.45 will give you angle P, or will give you 180? So 180 minus 90 minus 33.45 gives you 56,55 degrees. And you just need to remember interior angles of a triangle. Just state your reason. How did you get that? Um, minus 90. I just want to double check that I didn't make a mistake. And yeah, you can do that in the test as well. Every time you've done something, just redo it again quickly in your calculator. See whether you still get the same answer. Okay, and then QR. QR over here. And again, you can use Pythagoras. You got the hypotenuse. Here is 5.8. So it's 5.8 squared minus 3.2 squared gives you 23.4. And the square root of 23.4 gives you um, 
eight centimeters and that is because of Pythagoras. All right, let's quickly look at this question. A wall AD is 7.3 meters high. B and C are two points in the same horizontal plane as D, so which means they all lie on a straight line. The angles of elevation is given to you as the angles given in the picture. Okay, so now they say to you calculate the distance between B and C. So between B and C. Now with this triangle, you cannot use trig um, because we have to use a 90 uh, degree triangle or we have to work only in a 90 degree triangle so by looking at this if I look at this triangle over here I can most definitely find CD and if you find CD and you can find BD you can subtract them from each other to give you this BC so I'm just showing you if I've got a long straight line and I've got a part of it then I can say the long one minus the short one will give you this side as well okay so that's what I'm going on so BD minus CD will give you BC so then let me just erase you a bit so I'm going to find BD which I can do then I'm going to find um, CD, sorry, BC. If you look at BC, I just want to quickly show you over here. If you've got the big triangle, you're going to work from this angle over here. You're going to ignore the inside there. We've got the opposite and we are looking for the adjacent. So I'm just going to quickly do it and then you can check your answer afterwards. Okay, so I hope you paused the video, you've checked your answer. So I worked out BD, which I indicated there in blue, and then I worked out CD, which is the red part over here. And if I subtract the blue from the red, I'll end up with the green, and I hope you got 11.27, sorry, meters. In you also get the following types of questions. It says, if 510A is 12, and A lies between 90 and 360, determine the following without the use of a calculator and with the aid of a diagram and leave your answer in simpler third form. So over here, 510A is equal to 12. So your first step is to get tan A alone and we're going to divide by five on both sides. So now if you look at this ratio, it is a positive fraction. Okay, oh, sorry, if you look at this fraction, it's a positive fraction. So where is tan positive? If you take your cast diagram, remember all of them are positive in the first, and tan, t -t 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 tan is positive in the third quadrant. But now, explicitly with my further restrictions, it tells me that it lies between 90 and 360. So it will either be in the second, the third, or the fourth quadrant. But it had to tell me that T is positive. So most definitely, it will lie in the third quadrant. So your diagram you're going to draw always. That looks very skew. Let's just try that again. Okay. You're going to draw your ray in the third quadrant always joins up to your x-axis very important this angle over here you indicate from the x-axis over here all the way to your ray and that is your angle a and you'll see more of that in grade 11 where we put that to use in our trig so just please note that you have to indicate your angle a over there all right, so now they said to you that tan A is 12 over 5. So it's shade your rear because x-rays tan A is your exterior, is y over x. So shade your rear, y over r, because x over r raise 10 your exterior so the y over here is the same as the 12 over here but now the third quadrant is very sneaky 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 because what if this i tell you is a negative and that was a negative won't it still then give me a positive 12 over 5 because a negative divided by negative gives you a positive so you need to go look where is your y value lying on your quadrant it's over there but what would be the corresponding y value? 
Would it be a negative 12 or a positive 12? It will be a negative 12. So that y over here is not just 12, it's a negative 12. Um, sorry, let me just erase that. Then the x value, again as well, it's um, negative 12 over x, which is a 5, but again, which side is it from the x-axis? It's on the negative side. So instead of being a positive 5, I must write it up as a negative 5. So very important, look in your diagram. It's going to indicate whether your x or your y is a positive or a negative. Okay, simplified, it should still give you the original. And as well, um, just note that your r is always a positive. Okay, so now we've got our x and our y values. Now we want to go and find r, and we're going to do that with the use of Pythagoras. So r squared is equal to negative 5 squared plus negative 12 squared. And do you see why your r will always be positive? Because those negatives will automatically always turn into a positive because of the squaring. And if you square root r plus minus 13, but because it's the radius and we know it's always positive, it gives us a positive 13. And that is with the use of Pythagoras. So now I always do like a hearty write-up. Let's do it in a nice purple or something. Okay, so your x is negative 5. Your y is negative 12. And your r is 13. And now you're going to take this further. And you're going to go answer to sine a. So that sine A, you're going to replace with the ratio that we've worked out now. And sine A is shade your rear cos x rays tan your exterior. So sine A is y over r, which is negative 12 over 13 which will give you negative 24 over 13. And there's your answer. Then cos square A, cos is x over r, so x over r, negative 5 over 13, and then we have to square it, which gives, which gives you a positive 25 over 169. And you can leave it in fraction form. All right, let's look at another one. So 3 sine a is negative 2. So I'm going to rewrite that. 3 sine a is equal to negative 2. And then I'm just going to immediately divide by 3 on each side. Um, so we've got that our sine has to be a negative. So if you look at your cast diagram. So these are where all of them are positives. So where is the sign negative? Can you see it can either be in the second or the, oh, sorry, the third or the fourth? Because the first, all of them are positive and the second one sign is positive. So third or fourth. And, but they say to you that cos A must be a negative. So cos is where cos is a negative. That's our further um, uh, uh, constriction. Okay, restriction, sorry, <laughs> construction, restriction. Okay, cos A is smaller than zero. So where is cos? Basically, where is cos negative? Cos is positive over here, so it can either be negative over here or negative over there. So where is my overlap? Aha, uh -huh. can you see? It's going to be in the sneaky, sneaky third quadrant. Okay, and now shade your rear so now the r is 3 and my y can you see is going to be negative 2 and the x value that we're going to get has to also be by looking at it look 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 it has to be a negative because it's lying on the negative side okay so we're going to do that with Pythagoras so x squared plus negative 2 squared is giving me 3 squared, negative 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, so x squared is 9 minus 4, which gives you 5, 
So x is equal to a plus minus the square root of 5. And because it is lying on the negative side, I'm going to choose my x value as negative square root of 5. So remember, the negative can't just be under the square root, but can be negative, um, and the square root of 5 is like 2 point something. So it can be negative 2 point something. But they asked me to leave my answers in the simplest third form. So I'm not going to change it, but I am going to do my beautiful hearty write-up, because I love it so much. Okay, and negative square root of 5, the y is negative 2, and my r is 3. So there we go. Now they ask you to calculate 5, 10, A, 5, and 10 is shade your rear because x rays 10, your exterior. So it's going to be the y over the x. And that you are more than welcome to put into your calculator to get 2 square root of 5. Okay, so remember they said leave your answers in simplest third form, which would be 2 square root 5. Then cos, cos x rays, so cos is x over r over 3, oopsie. I don't want to put that cos there. I don't want to confuse you. Sorry. It's just equal to um, negative square root of 5 over 3 squared. And then that will give you a negative to an even number is a positive. Square root of 5 squared is 5 over 9. Okay, and there's your answer. 5 over 9. And we do, do follow up marks. So if you perhaps... Ooh, one thing that's very important that I forgot here. Sis, sis, sis is your angle A over there. Please don't forget to indicate that angle. Okay, so you would have gotten that for indicating it. Then for your diagram. Then working out this. Oh, and very important here. What did I miss? So rather just go down. I'll go back and just go double check that you got everything right. So one, two, three, four marks roundabout. And then four. Five, oh, how much did I give you for? Three. Three marks. So probably your diagram, I would have just given one mark with your um, angle indicated. Okay, and then your two answers over there. Um, I'm just going to quickly show you this one. We have done this in class, in my class, although it is more part of grade 11. They say to you, if tan theta is P, use a diagram to determine the value of the following in terms of P. So then you just always put the P over 1. You're always going to draw your diagram in the first quadrant. Um, shade your rear because x-ray is tan your exterior. So the P is going to be Y. The X is going to be 1. And then you're going to find what R in terms of P. And then you've got your smiley right or your hearty right up. And then you just go and replace it with that answers in terms of P. Okay, so I'm not going to dwell too much in that. We'll look at that again next year. Right, question seven, drawing your graphs. Let's have a look at this, see if you can remember. Given that sine, uh, so, sorry, given that f of x is sine x minus one and g of x is two cos x, for um, zero all the way to 270, for, actually for x is an element from zero to 270. So what that means, that this is your starting point. If you put it in your calculator, we're going to start at zero and we're going to end at 270. Normally, I just always put it in steps of 30. So I'm going to quickly do that. And then I just want to double check my y axis that I've put it in the correct, um, uh, what would we call it, in the, in the correct part. So if you put in sine x, so shift Oh, sorry not shift mode setup just very very important here i'm just going to enlarge here so if you put in f of x is equal to sine x minus one just please be careful that minus one can't be included in your bracket i have so many students that or actually just one who kept on doing it last year and she kept on getting all her um coordinates just a little bit off so it's it's horrible so please 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 Make sure that when you put it in, you um, close your bracket and then minus one. 
Okay, so you're going to put equa uh, sorry, not equations. So mode setup, table seven. So you're going to say sine alpha x close bracket minus one. Okay, then, like I said, your starting point is uh, g of x. No, I don't want to put another one in. Starting is 0, end at 270, and steps of 30. Okay, so if you're going to put in steps of 1, your calculator is going to bomb out and say, I don't know how to do it. It's too many coordinates. Okay, so I just want to find two lovely colors to draw these graphs in. Okay, so your first significant coordinate is 0, negative 1. Okay. Then the next one that's quite significant is 90, 0. Hopefully you know what the graph sort of looks like. 180 is negative 1. 270 is negative 2. Okay, so your sine graph, upy, upy, downy, downy. And if I had to continue, oh, why did it do that? It would go again, uppy, uppy, downy, downy. Okay, so up to there. That's your sine graph. And then very important, please indicate all your intercepts and turning points. So over here, that is an intercept with the x-axis, which is 90, 0. And over here, this would be your turning point, 270, negative 2. So those are all very significant points that we have to plot. And yeah. That's it for now. Let's quickly draw the other one. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit quicker. So 2 cos x, so you're going to put in 2 cos alpha x, close brackets, g of x, no, zero, start at 0, end at 270, steps of 30. And that one you'll see starts at 0, 2, then 61, 90, 0, 180, negative 2, 240, I'm going to skip a few, 240, negative 1, and 270, 0. I just want to quickly see, I think I misplaced, sorry, this 180, that 120 looks a lot like 180, so 180 was negative 2 over there. All right, and it should look like a bowl. Your cosine graph looks like a bowl, and if I had to continue, it would look like that. So again, nice even flow, and it stops over there. Okay, now we've drawn it. Have I done everything? Have I labeled this turning point over here? No, I haven't. And... This intercept, we, oh, we can see that's 270, 0, but let's my write it. And that one shares that point of 90, 0. Then I just want to call this one g of x, and this one is f of x. So in the um, exam, what I would suggest is you draw it with pencil, and once you are very super happy with your drawing, you take your highlighters and you highlight them two different colors, and you make sure that your two graphs stand out for yourself. Um... Okay, now they say to use the graph to write down the following. What is the amplitude of G? Now G, just want to make sure, is the cos graph and it's whatever is here in front of you. Can you see that the amplitude, sorry, no, what am I doing? I'm doing the range. So the amplitude of G of X is 2 over there. If it was perhaps a negative 2 cos, so remember your amplitude is always the positive because it's a distance, it will still be 2. Okay, what is the range of f? So f of x is your sine graph. Can you see it ranges between 0 over here and, oh sorry, a little bit higher up, and negative 2. No man. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. It ranges between 2 over here. Sorry, that's your starting point. And if you had a ping pong ball, a ping pong ball, it would bounce between negative 2 and 2. Okay, so that is the range of it. So uh, y is an element of negative 2 to 2. Always the minimum to the maximum. Netoni. 
<laughs> minimum to the maximum. And I include those brackets because it does go through those points. So very important, um, it's square brackets. Okay, so I'm just going to erase all my extras, clean up a bit. Okay, then the number of solutions. So the number of solutions, why I ask you this and not tell, I won't ask you for which value of X, it's because we don't know always that value, but I'm asking you for the number of times F of X is equal to G of X in this um, graph between 0 and 270. So can you see there's your 1 and 2 times. So 2 times these two graphs meet and greet Say hello and move along. Okay, so the number of solutions is 2. The values of x for which f of x times g of x is bigger than 0. So bigger than 0 means a positive number. So where the two y values are a positive when they get multiplied. So let's quickly have a look here. Can you see the y values for this green graph here is a positive? Whereas the y values here is a negative and a positive times a negative gives you a negative okay so here is a very significant point because they cross then the one is a negative and the other one is a negative which makes a negative and a negative a positive and still over here even when they cross over there it's still underneath the x-axis both of them so basically what i'm asking is where are they positive where is both at the top or both at the bottom of your x-axis. And it's definitely here yeah, from 90 all the way to 270. We know that the graphs continue, but remember it's only between those two intervals from 0 to 270. So we're going to say it's x is an element of, and it goes as no stripey underneath, so it's going to be round brackets, from 90 all the way to 270. Just make sure, 90 all the way to 270. All right, 100%. All right, question four, another question of drawing. Given the equation of f of x is negative 2 cos x, close bracket, minus 1. And they say to you, on the axis below, sketch the graph for f of x is between 0 and 360. So 2, sorry negative 2 cos alpha x close bracket minus 1 start at 0 end at 360 and steps of 30. okay then you'll see that your calculator takes a little bit of time but then it gives you all the coordinates and 60 okay so i'm going to quickly plot it and then see whether yours come out the same as mine all right there's your lovely symmetrical points and then I'm just going to join them up. Remember a cosine, this would be your positive cos and your negative cos will look like that. So over here, a little bit of a ball and downward it go. Sorry, I plotted, I remember, <laughs> sorry, I plotted the wrong one at the positive. It should be started at the negative. Okay, then again, your coordinates. This is a significant one. Why? Because it's your turning point. And then over here, it was 120, 0. And over here, it was 240, 0. So there, sorry, it crosses its x-intercepts. And that is your turning point. That is very, very um, important. This is your minimum values over there. That's your maximum. OK, then I've somewhat answered it already. Give the range of the above function. Can you see it ranges between? 1 and negative 3, but always minimum to maximum. So negative 3 to 1. And it's square brackets. Although this one doesn't look so square. Let me just redo it, sorry. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get the same green over there. So it ranges between negative 3 and 1. Then it says give the coordinates of the maximum turning point of this function, which was over there which I labeled, and it's over there. Then it says, give the equation of the graph of G. If G is the graph of F reflected in the x-axis, so the y must change, and then is moved up one unit. So the whole F of x gets a negative in front, so which means a negative goes in front of the whole equation, 
which will implicate or um, sorry, it will change both signs of both terms, and then they say to you also um, and moved up one unit. So I'm going to add one at the end, which gives you two cos x plus two. Just something um, which is just please to remember the period for both the sine and the cosine graph is always 360. So remember the period is the number of degrees that the graph runs through before it starts repeating itself. And we know with the cos graph, it's 360, as well as with the sine graph, it would be from 0 to 360, and then it goes again. 0 to 360 okay so the period for both of those graphs are 360 for the tangent graph the period is 180 okay just for interest sake okay then it says use the graph or any other method to determine all the values of x for the interval between 0 and 360 for which f of x is negative 2 so f of x which is the y value is negative 2 so if you read it off there x is 60 where else is your x negative 2 yeah at 300 okay does it make sense so x is 60 and x is 300 i just want to label this before i move on this is graph f of x okay <laughs> nitty gritty stuff okay then this one i've already done so i'm going to redo it it says, given the graph of g of x is sine uh, is g of x is equal to sine x for x is an element of negative 180 all the way to 90. Okay, so it doesn't matter. They can pull it back into the negative as well. We're just going to use that and answer the questions that follow. Let me just redo them. There we go. Ach, no man, come now. There we go. Okay, for which values of x is the graph g increasing? So this is graph g of x. Can you see it's going to go down, 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 stop. From there, up, 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 up. Okay, so the part where it is increasing is from 0 all the way up to, uh, sorry, not from 0, from negative 90 all the way up to 90. And then it doesn't include negative 90. It doesn't include 90 either. Because at those two points, the graph actually stops. Okay. Give the value of x for which g of x is bigger than 0. Bigger than 0 is above the x-axis. So here's your x-axis over here. Where is the graph above the x-axis? Over there. Which ranges from 0 all the way to 90 so x is an element from 0 all the way to 90 and I do, do, do not include it because there's no little stripey underneath so it will definitely be round brackets all right and then the very last question in this video um, f of x is equal to a cos x and gx is equal to b sine x plus q that are sketched below what I would have just given is that this is graph this is your cos graph which is f of x so I'm going to highlight it with blue and I would have told you that this is g of x it's your sine graph upside down now if you look at them and I've already now said it <laughs> your positive sine graph looks like that it goes up mountain and a valley that is a positive if you look at this one you can see clearly it goes down and then up which makes it a negative graph so whenever you get your a value for um, or your b value the sine graph sorry it has to be a negative so when you use the formula it's going to work out your amplitude which will always be a positive but you need to go and add a negative because it is reflected okay um not for the q only for your front values a and b okay so let's follow my blue graph which is your cos graph and we are looking for a the front part which is your maximum minus your minimum divided by two so a 
is equal to max minus min. So I always say the people in the front of you, toy toy, they are angry. They are the most negative. The people at the back, ah, they relax. They are more positive. So if you're working out the back of your equation, it's max plus min divided by two. And if you're working out the front, they negative max minus minimum divided by two. Okay, so the maximum over here is your one. And we have to subtract your minimum value here, which is negative one, which gives you one. But remember, because it has been reflected, your A is going to be negative one. Okay, for B, the pink for B is also your max minus your minimum divided by two. The maximum over here is zero minus and your minimum is negative 2 divided by 2. So 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So B is negative 1. Why? Because it is an upside down sign. It's been reflected. Okay. Then the last one. For the Q value at the back. So remember I said your equation changes or your formula to work it out. It's maximum plus your minimum divided by 2. The maximum is still 0, the minimum is still negative 2, so it's 0 plus minus 2 divided by 2. So 0 minus 2 is negative 2 over 2, which also gives you negative 1. So what that means is it has been shifted down 1. You can also just work with the original. In class today, Thomas is a very smart little boy. <laughs> A very smart boy. Um, he said, if you take the original, we know that the original looked like that. But now we can see that it has been reflected. So it will look like that. And then instead of starting at zero, it is now starting at, ne sorry, at negative one. So it has been reflected and it's been shifted down one. So you can also just look at the graph and how it's been manipulated and then apply that to your missing values. You're also welcome to do that. Okay, thank you so much for watching. That is it from me. I hope that you understand trigonometry a little bit better or otherwise just maybe here and there there's things that you haven't or you didn't remember that you will now please remember in the test. Okay, all the best especially to my grade 10s. I love you all very much. And please, you did so well in paper one. Please continue to do well in paper two. Push hard. It's the last week of exams. And yeah, I just know you can. Do your best. Thanks, Anne.